Hello friends, welcome back to my channel on Feral Smart World and this is Feral. I'm so excited today. I'm at Radisson Blue and in this vlog I'm gonna meet the famous celebrity of Ethiopia and she is also one of the rising star of Africa. So I'm so excited. Join me in my excitement. Indeed, Mr. Lamnish Petty, and Chin Akinish, but I'm just going to be But I'm just going to be out. Yeah, friends, she is Bethy G. She is the most famous uh, Ethiopia singer, and she is Africa's rising star. So let's get started. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Bethy Ji. <laughs> How did your passion for music start and what helped you in your singing career? Uh, well, I don't know how my passion started, but I've always wanted to be a singer. I think it didn't start, but I was born with it. I've always wanted to be a singer. Ever since I was a little girl, I told my mother, don't expect me to, to go finish education and uh, do all my higher educations. I'm going to be a singer. I'm going to be a star. That's, that's my vision for life. Uh, but, uh, but the one thing that she accepted was she accepted my passion, but she suggested that I study first that I go to school and I have to learn. Uh, though that was the, the agreement we had, in a way. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know when it started, but I've always had it. I've always wanted to be a singer. <laughs> so can you tell us at uh, what age uh, you felt that, okay, you, are, uh, uh, you have this uh, passion for singing? And how did you start your career? When was your first uh, show, stage show? Okay. Um, I think I was six or seven when I wanted to really be a singer. Um, yeah, that's why Most I said. Of the kids don't even realize. Exactly, that's yeah. why I said I was born with it. It just didn't come. I was born with it. I was born to be a singer. <laughs> uh, but my first performance, my first stage was uh, in my high school. There was a carnival and I performed. It was a huge stage. I performed for uh, parents and everybody who attended uh, our carnival. And I was 16 then. So you mean to say you started your show, uh, first show, when you were at the age of 16? Yes. Wow. At the age of 16. Yes. That's nice. <laughs> so then how uh, would you, what do you say, uh, classify uh, yourself as? What actually type of your, um, singer. singer would you classify yourself as? Um, I would consider myself as a pop artist, as a pop, Eth Ethiopian pop artist, because I try to mix the Ethiopian uh, cultural music with the Western uh, pop culture. I try to create a new uh, type of genre that would be the Ethiopian Ethiopian pop, because my songs are not typically traditional, uh, and they're not hundred percent modern too. But they're in between. It's just like a new Ethiopian pop. Which uh, show uh, would you say that was your best performance till now? Uh, well. Uh, the biggest show I ever performed was the Nobel Peace Prize uh, show that I pre performed at the Oslo, in, in Oslo. Uh, that was the biggest show, uh, and I think till now uh, the the my perform the, the performance that lasts and that lasted in my head is, is that one. And of course, my my first performance, my first stage experience was one of the beautiful experiences I've ever had. Um, but I would say the one I just Perform. Can you share about 2019 experience in Oslo when Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed received the Nobel Prize? Thank 
Um, sure. Um, well, um, at first when I knew, I was very excited. But then I was very overwhelmed because I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I felt like I was, it was, a, it was a burden because you, I was representing my country and I had to, I had to do it justice because um, I can't mess up on a big stage like that. So um, yeah, it was a little bit stressful. And uh, since it was a surprise for the prime minister as well, we really had to make sure that it was something really good that we took over there. Wow. So when this we were really working, is. yes, when we were working on the material, we were actually really working very hard to really make him proud and make every Ethiopian proud uh, at that moment. And so we, I had to combine uh, diff the dress was from a different region, the, the languages are from a different region, the beat is from a different region and the dance is from a different region. So since Ethiopia is so beautiful and so rich with uh, um, um, ethnicity and I had to represent most of it, I can't do everything because we're, we're around 82 and more, but I was trying to at least give Ethiopia a very good uh, a platform. So. Yeah, it was, it was exciting and stressful at the same time. <laughs> I can imagine the nervousness yes. which you had and to, yeah, to yeah, perform in front of such a large audience yes. in Oslo. Yes. Um, but you did the... great. I saw your thing and it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and the day of the show it was scary. It was not stressful because we did all the practice. We rehearsed. We were very confident. But it was very scary. What was scary was we were performing for our prime minister. We were performing for kings and queens we never had before. So that was scary. That was the other uh, emotion that was playing. So it was very, I was emotionally very overwhelmed with everything. <laughs> you have worked with renowned artists like Teddy Afro, Zaritu Kabade, Johnny Raga, Nati Man, and many more. So can you share your most vivid experience with our audience? Uh, well, I've had so many experiences with all the, uh, these artists. Uh, when we were touring with Zaritu, we, with Zaritu, we just didn't do a, a concert. We did a tour and we went to 10 different states in Ethiopia. And that was uh, my first like concert performance. Uh, the first performance I had was in my high school. And after that, a bigger stage that I had was touring and doing concerts with her and I was still in high school I was learning and I would travel back and forth uh, over the weekend for the concerts and come back uh, to class early, um, early Monday morning and but the experience that I had with her was her her stage presence her performance uh, and uh, the time that she took to really give a, a good show uh, I think it was by far the first in its kind for Ethiopia in general. Uh, we practiced for at least a month with the with just our vocals and then a month with the band and then another month with the with a with the dance crew. We were rehearsing, we were practicing dance moves and everything. So we really practiced a lot before we started touring and I was um, really uh, impressed by the by the way she pays attention to details uh, to her she she really gives attention to every uh, craft that she does uh, and with Nati, uh, with Natiman we worked for like uh, several years years after that after uh, uh, we met at Zaritu tour and then we stayed together and we performed for like uh, 10 or more than 10 years together and I've learned a lot with him uh, he is uh, very free on stage he really knows how to express himself, not just with the words, but with his dance moves. So I, I think I would say I learned and I picked some of uh, that from him. And uh, Teddy Afro, uh, we did a single song. I was part, I was able to be part of a choir band for his show in uh, uh, at the stadium. But before that, we did a song. Uh, he had a he had a new song. Uh, released and that song was part of the concert and uh, I mean I was really amazed by that by how he writes uh, we know Teddy Afro for, for his 
beautiful writings, but I never had an experience with him, sitting with him and, and knowing, uh, seeing him work. Uh, but that experience gave me a, an amazing uh, experience, that seeing him working, uh, learning, and he knows exactly what he wants on, on his songs. And yeah, I don't know if I can say I, I've, I've acquired it because that's not something you can easily pick up. <laughs> it's, a, it's years and years and years of practice that he has. So, uh, but yeah, but those were the, were the things that I was really happy of. Um, and on the concert, it was a stadium full of people. And I was like, I was so amazed that I wanted to show a concert of my own as big as that. Yes. So it's always a learning experience. Most of them are learning experiences. Yes, you <laughs> learn from people who are with you, so definitely. Of course, of course. So, um, can you tell us um, about the song, devotional song, Vaishnav Jan, which is also Gandhiji's uh, yeah, favorite song. So, uh, can you share uh, yeah, about that experience? of Ethiopia and um, it was a challenge because the language is different the music is different everything is different and I was really happy uh, and of course they sent me the message uh, the, the, the meaning of the song and uh, we we were working on it for Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi's 150th anniversary yes. so I was really uh, happy to be part of a big project like this I think to learn how to live with um, w with with other human beings, um, Gandhi had a major role, played a major role. He taught us how to be, how to accept each other, how to respect each other, and how to respect our culture, how to respect ourselves. So I was really uh, happy to be part of a project as big as this, and um, uh, it was a challenge because the language was different, and I didn't want to to. <laughs> to disappoint anyone. <laughs> Who helped you to learn the song and how did you pick up the words? Can you recall on that? Um, I had few people from the embassy that were helping me. Um, at, at the very beginning, I had uh, a woman who was uh, helping me out with the words and I had to write it down in Amharic and learn it uh, because, I mean, I have to somehow relate to it. I had to write down the the uh, the words the words in Amharic the words in Amharic so I can practice it I practiced it I had to send it her I sent had to send her the audio so she can correct me and I think the first version I sent her was a bit fast and uh, aggressive with the sound it was not very soft it was not mellow so she had to tell me that I have to make it a bit mellow make it soft because it's a soft song and we had to redo it again and then we had another uh, uh, we had another person from the embassy uh, and he said he was a singer too so he knows the music uh, and yeah he, he, he knew music so he had to come to the embassy and correct me a few things but he was already very happy when he came to the studio so can you tell me um, how much time uh, it actually uh, took you to learn the song with the words and like uh, how much time it took you for the whole thing to be done and then you were out with the video 
I think I would say a month. Uh, because for because there was so many back and forth. You are pretty quick learner. Yes. <laughs> no, but uh, I I mean I took my time and I memorized everything. Uh, one thing that I uh, love is when, whenever you add melody to anything, it doesn't matter whether you understand the, lang the, the, the words or you know the language, you can easily capture, you can easily memorize it. So the first thing I did was I memorized the melody. And once I did that, I was attaching the words with it. So um, yeah, the, I, I, I took my time into learning the words and the melody. And yeah, it's like I, I studied it like a poem with the with the song and then I had to redo it and then try to make it my own so I wouldn't sound the, the first record. Yes, but uh, you have incorporated that song so well with the Ethiopian and the uh, uh, our what is a culture. So what actually uh, gave you the idea to incorporate both the cultures together, Indian culture and Ethiopian culture? Well, the first thing was to, um, I mean, the song is in Gujarati, it's an Indian song, and we're, we're like giving tri tributes to Mahatma Gandhi. So uh, when we do that, we have to uh, show who is doing it, because I can't wear the Indian dress and then, you know, uh, but if I was wearing like the Ethiopian dress and, you know, Ethiopia is giving tribute to Mahatma Gandhi would make more sense. Uh, and that was the one of the directions that, that I had from the Indian Embassy of Ethiopia. And then I had to improvise a little more and add uh, a few more dresses and, uh, you know, uh, use few Ethiopian monuments so we can be, you know, it's Ethiopia embracing uh, what Mahatma Gandhi did for the whole world. Are most of your songs based on things that happened in your life? Um, well, I mean, some of the things do happen. Not everything happens, but some of the things, of course, they do happen. And when it happens, of course, you can uh, really express the feelings more better. You can put the emotions in the words more better, uh, uh, in a better way. But not everything happened to me. But the, there, are, there are things that, are really per that I really connect personally, and there are, there are songs that I that is just, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a story, like, uh, it's a fictional story that we created for the, for the song. <laughs> you are a goodwill ambassador for UNHCR. Regarding this, what are your plans for the future? Uh, well, with the UNHCR, uh, as a goodwill ambassador, I advocate for refugees. Um, at first, I didn't even know that we had refugees in Ethiopia, so, uh, and I was... At first, I really wanted to know what was what were they were talking about, and once I saw it, I was like very impressed with my country and what UNHCR was doing here for um, South Sudanese, uh, for Eritreans, and for Somalians, uh, and yeah. Um, so I advocate for them, uh, and I try to be their voice because uh, I mean, um, living in in another country is very hard N not being at home is one thing it's a challenge on its own but you know when you're forced to be exiled from your home that's another challenge and uh, and these people are, are living in conditions where life is not really easy uh, where uh, shelter is considered as a luxury and having food on the table is, is is a luxury too so their primary needs are not easily met so I try to advocate for them. And I know that many Ethiopians went through the UNHCR channel. For in, in, and then now they are, of course, in different uh, positions uh, of, of, of their career, in different parts of their life. But they, we went through it as a, as a community and as a country. Even Ethiopia went through it. So now that Ethiopia is opening her arm and uh, sheltering around 900,000 refugees, 900,000 refugees. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's a big number. Yeah. Yes, it's not easy. Uh, and, and Ethiopia as a country is not a very developed country. It's a developing country. So we don't have enough to share, but, but we're sharing whatever we have. So even this story needs to be, t needs to be told. So this In this time, I can say, yeah, sharing is caring. It is. And it when is you scary. care, you are sharing. Exactly. <laughs> what message does your recent song, Hagre, gives to your fan? Um, the message of the song is really to remind people what is more important. 
um, as Ethiopians are very proud with our monuments, with our stories, with our history, with everything that we have. But sometimes we, 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 we um, I feel like we lose focus when we just focus on the material things and on the history of the country and forget that what is really, what is essential. And what is essential is the fact that we, we are, we the humans are what we create. Or we are the ones who make the country. So, uh, and, and by doing that, by, recog by recognizing our di diversity, and how beautiful we are when we're working together is to really remind that when instead of focusing on just the soil of the country or the wildlife we should remember that a country sta cannot stand on its own but with its population so the message is really to remind people that we have to respect each other that we have to love each other so if i say i love ethiopia then i have to love my brothers and sisters my ethiopian brothers and sisters and that's that's the main message of the song so you are a big uh, celebrity so when you go out uh, do you what actually uh, kind of uh, things you face challenges do you face can you move out easily um well i can go out as easily as i want <laughs> i don't have any problem but uh, I might have to stand and take pictures and say hi to uh, people. I think the one thing I would call it a challenge would be um, I, I, I can't be mad or I can't be sad. If I am having a bad day, then I can't express that. Uh, I have to always, you know, uh, be happy with my, for my fans and with my fans. Uh, I think that would be a challenge, but, but the rest is just beautiful. I've always wanted to be a star. I've always wanted to be recognized for, for whatever I do. So I'm, I'm really happy with, with the recognition that I'm getting. <laughs> what is your message for the fans around the globe? Any message you would like to give to your fans on COVID-19? Um, I think I would say now is the time where we really have to unite and we have to help each other, support each other by not connecting. It's okay, we could be as far from each other as possible because we have to keep our distances. But then again, we could be uh, caring for each other. We could be thoughtful. Uh, for example, whenever we're told to wear masks, by wearing a mask, I am saying that I care for everyone else. We, the, the problem with the virus is we don't know where it is. We don't know who has it. Uh, some people are some people get really sick some people don't some people are not infectious at all but then they can contaminate so it's by protecting myself and I'm protecting everyone else so listening to every advices that we uh, are given is part of uh, uh, uniting with everyone so united we stand and yes. we follow the instruction given by WHO. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, we have to. And hopefully uh, we'll have a corona-free environment so we can all... Uh, hopefully, yes. Together, you know, and then, uh, you know, live, live life as we used to know. It. Yes, we <laughs> miss it. We, we, we miss it, definitely. We, it, definitely. we all miss it. You can imagine, you, you have no idea how challenging it is for Ethiopians because we love eating together. We love staying in a community we're very community community based a society so for us not to handshake not to hug not to kiss it's it's really disturbing we don't even know how to act so there are times that i say hi so many times because i feel like it's not good enough because normally we're used to hugging and kissing now that that's not there i would say hi and i feel like it's not enough and i'll say hi again so yeah but uh, and not the fact that we can't eat together i mean us ethiopians we invite people we even feed people so losing all that at one take it's <laughs> it's really hard. yes it is difficult for us but we'll we will pass this time soon definitely definitely thank you so much Bethi ji thank you <laughs> thank you for having me thank you so much for being on my show thank you. bye guys thank you thank you friends so much i had lovely time with uh, Bethi ji and i hope you like this video and if you like my content don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell button for more updates like this thank you